Good morning, everybody. It is. It is something. I was gonna say something s smart, and my words eluded me as normal. So, project though, um, for a little bit of a change for the moment. This is a zip disk. Um, we got all this stuff from Jim and the DFW Retro Retro Computing Group. Great group if you're in the uh, Fort Worth area. Um, Central Texas area, but these are these are some dip, zip disks that I guess have some personal info on them that need to be erased, and as part of some of a, a trade deal, um, he he gave me these, and I just have to I have to erase them. So um, I like to get that done fat first. These are these are also in the erase queue, but these are um, either have been erased in the past or aren't as high priority. I like to erase anything that has. Um, any customer stuff like pretty much the second it comes in for obvious reasons so we're gonna get these erased now he gave me a couple of these IDE zip disks and I've, I've, I have some SCSI ones and some parallel port ones and that kind of thing I think I've got one computer with an internal drive and then one Apple with an internal drive that doesn't work but what we're gonna do is try and Try and get this to work with the USB adapter and just see how it goes. See if I can erase it with my erasing software. Okay, so that actually turned out pretty easy. So I've got this guy just plugged into that USB adapter. I'll show you what that is in a second. And then just a power, this power brick here um, that just has a Molex connector on it. All cheap stuff. You can get it on eBay. And I, I had a new... I have a new disc handy, so I just pop that in there, and you can see here I can access all the files on it just fine. So theoretically, I should be able to open my um, software here that'll let me focus the freaking camera. There we go. Yeah, and select this and start the erasing process. So that will make erasing all these discs super easy. Um, so basically, all that is, um, that's not it, do, do, do. ah, here's one. I've got these little um, USB to IDE adapters, and these are really cheap, I think 5 10 bucks on Amazon, eBay, that type of thing. And then all you need is some sort of, some sort of power for the device, and these have worked with all sorts of stuff. I've used them with CD drives, I've used them with... A zip disk now but also all sorts of IDE hard drives they work really well so I use that a lot of these for my erasing um, I prefer these type if you can find them they all kind of look the same um, I prefer those over the multi adapter here just because I've had some stability issues with this I did add a different cable to this one so that I have um, I can get the power from an extra like a USB power adapter, and that way I can power older 2.5 inch PATA drives from laptops. Focus. So that's the smaller port there. I never actually use the SATA one, it works okay, but it's slow. And I've got SATA docks everywhere, so. Yeah, that's basically that. Um, so that works pretty good. I'll, I'll erase and we'll kind of update after we do some of the other projects. So over here by this AOC monitor, I've got this VGA splitter box thing. Um, it just runs off of 9 volts, I think. But anyway, right now I've got that hooked up to this as the primary monitor. And that's just coming from the VGA port on this um, benchmarking box. And then if we go over here, you can see it splits the signal over here as well. So hopefully that'll make things a little easier. I guess one reason I'm doing this is when I'm entering some of these benchmark numbers. I, so I have some memory issues and um, sometimes I have to run back and forth between the computer and this thing probably five or six times before I actually end up with the uh, with the benchmark number that I want. So that should save me a lot of time. So I'm going to test it out here with an actual benchmark in a couple minutes, but I'm going to go grab a card that I need to test, because right now I'm just running off of the integrated CPU um, graphics, 
And then when that's done, we'll grab that other Dell computer um, and work on that and see if we can start getting some of these AGP cards going as well. But I think I like that. For now, we're just going to leave it like that. I do still have the KVM, but I'm not going to hook it up for the moment. I think I like having the extra space. Um, just having one computer here. So we're going to go with this and see, see how we like it. If we end up needing a second spot, or if it's easy to set one up, then maybe we'll do that. All right, so I've got I've got 3D Mark 2000 running on here, um, and the card that I've put in here right now is a Radeon X1300. It was another thing in the box of stuff that um, Jim was getting rid of. So thank you again, Jim. We'll find it a good home for sure. But um, I don't know if you can tell from this. I think it's kind of hard to, but there is a little bit of kind of blurring um, as it goes through that splitter. That's pretty normal from my experience with with these uh, with these kind of splitters. But I'm not really, I don't really care about video performance. Um, the resolution on this monitor also maxes out at about 1024 by 768, which, again, for this doesn't really matter because that's all I'm benchmarking out anyway um, for all these computers so we're just gonna we're just gonna go with it We've got this all set up with the the next profile in here for yeah I don't have my camera tuned to the CRT on this I apologize but I'll put the 3d mark number in and we can kind of compare to some of the other cards and setups that we've had um, and I know there are other benchmarks as well, but this just gives me a kind of vague general idea of where the card sits with other with other systems I've had. I did have some issues, not with the setup, but with getting the drivers for this card. Um, and it wasn't actually any issue with availability, it was that my computer over here, my desktop, thanks to, um, thanks to Windows updates, I can no longer create folders. So before I go roll that update back and restart, I just got to wait for this guy right here to finish uh, to finish on the the erasing, and then I'll show you how I print a label out. Um, and that's what this printer up here is for. All this does is spit labels out when it's done, um, and then I I also have a certificate and some paperwork that I need to do. But then I'll come back here and we can, uh, I guess this is all stuff you don't really need to know about. But I'll fix this. And then we can start working on the, uh, the AGP benchmark computer. Finished our first benchmark over here. I don't have a ton of good data for how this compares. Just off the top of my head. But you can see here I have a Radeon 9600 and AGP 4X. That was at 11 about 11,000 in 3D Mark 2000. This one was about 13,000. And then some of the other cards I've had that are a little bit faster, like a good GT210 comes in at about 18,000 in the same system. So that helps me get an idea of what this card can do. It is a little bit slower it's looking like so far, but it also kind of depends on how 3D Mark 2001 and 3D Mark 03 go. And we might run 05 on here. And that just kind of tests some of the DirectX, you know, seven eight nine whatever support so we'll give that a shot in other news we finished um, erasing this zip disk here and this is what the label looks like so um, it just spits out a label with the serial number on it I think the serial number is actually the serial number of the drive in this case but that's fine I don't worry about it too much for for uh, older media like this the important thing is it is three pass erased um, and then so it's basically HIPAA compliant erasing and then it spits a certificate out um, good software there's a few different ones that do it but I really like using this one so I think it's active active at sign I don't know how to spell it activate active at I don't know anyway active at disk erasing good stuff works really well had to put a new New set of labels in my printer, which is first time that's happened in a while, so there we go. Ready to erase a bunch more of these discs. 
So now that we've got this done, we'll go ahead and I'm going to get the next couple benchmarks running. And then as soon as my desktop comes back up, I think we're going to try... Um, we're going to try working on this Dell over here. So here's that Dell machine I mentioned in the other video. And in that video I was saying, I was talking about how I ruined it by dropping a screw in there. And actually I've been remembering it was that there were some slot covers still in here. And when I popped this open to add and remove an AGP card, I dropped one and it fell down here somewhere. And I didn't notice, and it uh, it shorted out something on the motherboard and fried it. So I've already taken, I've already taken the CPU and the memory out and the hard drive, and we'll just be swapping all this over. Technically, all I would need to move over is the hard drive. It's a similar enough system that it would boot with that. However, part of what I wanted to move was, or the part of the reason I was moving the the RAM and the CPU as well, is because I want to keep it as accurate as I can to what this other computer was like and so this is a 1.1 gigahertz Pentium 3 it's a little bit different than what you'd find in most of those systems um, just a little bit faster I wanted to make sure I was going to give an accurate idea of what the, whether or not the card would hand up, handle stress and sometimes with the faster AGP cards you need a little bit faster processor to be able to push them um, and then this memory I wanted to make sure that the memory was the same timings basically it's 512 megabytes of RAM and yes there are a few things I would do differently in this computer if I were to redo it now but um, because we have most of the benchmarks already set up like this I think we're going to continue doing it like this for the moment and we'll we'll go from here if uh, if we need to I can I can set up a new benchmark uh, machine and, and redo a bunch of these but so we're going to go take this out to the out to the scrap pile, not scrap pile, but the storage. Swap it for the other one, and I'll be back in a few minutes. Okay, this was pretty hard to dig out. I uh, it was at the very bottom of the stack out there. Um, I'll I'll show you. I'll show you guys the the whole situation out there. But um, in one of my last videos, there's basically a wall with computers stacked up, and this was at the very bottom back corner. Uh, but I pulled it out. I've already got the CPU and RAM put in it off. Uh, excuse me off camera. I'm not very good at um, Filming that kind of stuff. So I, I I left it for now. I'm trying to get better at just getting the content out um, I did put a new CMOS battery in while I had the computer apart uh, Just because I knew that was gonna be an issue here in the future I bent the clips a little bit. They're kind of garbage on this, but something I always do and that I would recommend you do as well write the year that you installed it when you put a new CMOS battery in and that way when you open it up. Um, with this, I use it so often it's not going to be an issue. I'm going to remember that I replaced the CMOS battery. But when you pull out a computer to sell, if you go through lots of computers like I do, you can end up sometimes having to test the CMOS battery over and over again to make sure um, it's a fresh one. I don't like selling computers with a used CMOS battery in it that might be 5, 10, 15 years old, even if it has decent voltage in it. I'd rather, you know, dispose of the battery and then put a new one in just so I know it's going to be good for a good decade and so if you write the if you write the year on it then you just automatically know as soon as you open the case up oh yeah I replaced that one already um, so I've got it all plugged in I don't have a keyboard and mouse hooked up to it yet but I've got it plugged into this monitor and let's just hit the button and see see what happens looks like it's it's posting, that's good. I expect to have some CMOS errors here. But no memory or CPU errors so far, that's good. Yep. Alright. So we just gotta get this set up and hopefully we'll have it booting and start being able to benchmark some of these AGP cards. Not just benchmark, but stress test for those. I don't like selling them unless I've ran them through their paces a little bit. But it looks like this is back up and running again, and we'll stick the other one out there and in the spare parts pile. This is the CPU, and this is why I ended up taking the, the other heatsink out. Because this one has this uh, crud on it, because it had a, a Willamette, no, 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 copper mine core with the exposed die. 
And as you saw, the one that's in here had the heat spreader on it. And so I just switched the entire heat sink and assembly over because they are a little bit different. But looks like it's going to work just fine. And I think the last thing I'm going to do is go ahead and, and snap this off. Um, and the reason I'm going to do that is just to make it a little easier to, to put the AGP cards in. I ended up doing that on the last one. Oh, also I'll snap that off and I'm going to go ahead and remove these plates so I don't break it again. Because I want this computer to last a long time. I don't, don't have any more spares at this point even though these are pretty common to find. So we'll get it set up and then we'll, we'll get everything benchmarking. Okay, first off, this guy. This is the card we tested. This is a Radeon X1300 Pro. It actually turned out to be a little bit slow. Um, so first of all, one of the things I do with any card that might end up uh, moving into uh, the hands of a new owner. Whoops. One second. Gotta come over here. Keyboard's not plugged in all the way. There we go. We got it. Okay. One of the things I always do if the card might potentially find a new home is put a sticker on it with a number. Um, and the letter is just to make it a little easier to cycle through without having, like, a, it, it means that I, I already have three digits without having to you know zero 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 one or whatever um, and also if I have different types of hardware sometimes I'll I know for example right now that A is going to be video cards in my document um, and it's just an easy way to track it but in this case this uh, X1300 you can see it got 13,000 in 3D Mark 2000 10,000 in 3D Mark 2001 and 3800 in 3D Mark 03. Um, so if I come up to some other cards in the same machine, the GT210 was 7000 in 3D Mark 03 and a couple of other machines. A 5450, I forget what they test at. Yeah, it's about 9500 or 21000 in 3D Mark 2001. So. For, for 2001 and 2000, that's definitely still playable frame rates, very good frame rates, in fact, but 03, that's going to struggle quite a bit. This is where I would know already that I would probably pair this with a computer that's not going to be used for super intense later XP games. Um, so that's, that's how I do that, and that's been pretty helpful so far. Now it looks like this thing is having some issues, but... Overall, it, it works out pretty well, or it works pretty well right at the moment. I don't know why the PS2 mouse is not working right at the moment. Maybe it's a compatibility issue with this mouse, or maybe there's something wrong with the computer. It's got power. Now the keyboard's not working again. Yeah, we're just going to go ahead and reset this guy and hope it works. So this, this card is interesting, I think it's, it's a Radeon 90, it's not a 92LE, it's a VE, uh, something like that, but it's a, it's a Radeon 7000 basically, um, but a budget version I think included in some of the Dell computers, and it's very slow, extremely slow, but um, it is, so it's about equivalent to a GeForce 2MX, so it's definitely a budget card, but the difference is it overclocks pretty well especially if you point, point a fan at it. So, um, I've used it in XP machines just for just for testing, just for fun. I kind of like keeping it around. I don't really know why, but it's one of my cards I just throw in everything because even though it's slow, it's really reliable and I, it has very predictable benchmark results and drivers that support everything. So, we're going to go ahead and uh, and give it a test with that as soon as I can as soon as I can get this computer to boot anyway. I do like having this over here um, with that case that opens up that direction. I think it works out a lot better than it did having it in the other corner. Alright, looks like it's coming up. Look at that, the mouse even works, so they just weren't plugged in all the way. Very nice. Okay. 
All right, got this thing working, got the drivers installed. And as you can see over here, looks pretty much the same. Splitter's working pretty well. This is a little trippy to have it in two places, but works good. Just testing this so I can make sure that this computer lines up with with the last one that I uh, that I tested. Um, I also have another couple of these coming out of the racing machine, and I'm kind of experimenting. This is already these labels don't stick super well, which is one of the things I like about them. But unless they're on a really flat surface, they do tend to peel up on these drives, and and that's more just I mean, if there's a drive, I. I'm not too worried about it, especially with an old magnetic media, but I'm gonna gonna experiment with putting it this other direction, see if that sticks a little bit better. Um, eventually I may get some smaller ones, but I've got a giant stack of these labels that I got from a Goodwill for $3, so for now they're just getting used. Um, so next on the list is to start attacking this thing. Just get it all cleaned up. This is gonna be a little bit of a bigger project. There's probably going to be some sorting of electronics at some point into these storage containers here. But I'm not really 100% sure I'm going to do that right at the moment. And to be honest with you, there's a lot of things in this stack right here that I, it's more just I need to get it into a box of some sort. And I'll work on the sorting later. So we'll get started on that and I'll set up a, a tripod like we did before. And you can hang out. So that's looking a lot better already. I raised this up a little bit so that the cords wouldn't be as smashed down on the desk. There's still a few random things over here that I'm not 100% sure what to do with yet. Um, I organized this a little bit. I'm not sure how much showed up in the video, but just, just some really basic organization got it started. There's still a lot of stuff that I have to sort through. Um, so for example, I probably don't need to say anything else about that. Um, so yeah, and I did end up throwing away a few surface mount components that had spilled from their bags. I just didn't feel like picking through them if I ever really need them that bad. I saved a few and then I, the rest I just kind of swept into the garbage because not worth my time. So I think, I think we're just about ready to start working on some stuff. And my first one is going to be this, which was a ground, one of those grounding straps that you plug into, you clip to something grounded. Um, and what I'm going to do is solder a resistor to it, and then attach it to this strip of metal tape that goes across the front of my desk here, and hook it into the ground for the for the house. Um, and the reason I'm putting a resistor in is to kind of help me get to help me not get electrocuted when uh, my my backup battery does a self-test as that keeps happening. My uh, garage is not very well grounded, so. All right, I'm gonna work on that for a little bit. My battery's dying though, so I'm gonna go throw it on the charger and probably start uploading this video, but we'll see. So that pretty much wraps up this video. Got the desk all cleaned. Got everything accessible again. Got the benchmark computer set up. And next video, we'll start testing some of these cards. These are some of the incoming ones. And 
we will probably start working on a couple of the next projects. So if you've seen something that's interesting to you or there's something that you want to see more of, leave me a comment and subscribe so you don't miss it. Thanks.